A lot of changes in the Democratic Party. And of course, as a crypto only channel, we have to take a look at who would be the best play on the Democratic side for maybe the vice president nomination. We'll see how all this all plays out. You guys will love it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Let's get into it today. And of course, a couple of topics I want to hit on is our sponsor, iTrust Capital. If you're looking at long-term holding of your crypto and you want to do it in an IRA, this is one of the best and safest places to go to. Check out itrustcapital.com. You can buy, sell crypto, gold, and silver with your IRA. And of course, you'll be uh, included in about $9 billion in transactions, over 200,000 accounts that are out there uh, tucked in on iTrust Capital. So check it out. Let's go over to a couple of things I want to hit on today on the issue of politicians and their stance on crypto. If you have not been following our show very long, you probably have seen us report on this quite a bit, and that is Stand With Crypto. You can search pretty much any politician out there, with the exception of a few that we're going to be talking about today, and get at least their position on crypto. A couple of th points I want to hit on here, poly market, kind of interesting right here. This is very intriguing to me. They, of course, pinned that Biden would drop out of the race at 11.56 a.m. Their time allocated for the time change. That was at about 1.56 p.m. So you look at what the mainstream news was doing. CBS came in at 2.02. NBC and ABC also came in later. So essentially, Polymarket was ahead of all of our news media on what was going on tied to what is happening in crypto almost real time. So that is pretty impressive uh, when you look at this. Here, of course, this trade is going to be in the Hall of Fame. And that was if you bet 12000 on Kamala Harris winning the 2024 Democratic pres presidential nomination, if she in fact does, that's a 768000 to win ratio. So pretty big bet there. Now, of course, this all has to be done over at the Democratic uh, National Convention. If you look at the Democratic uh, VP nominee and you start looking down the list, a couple of people show up that could potentially be construed as pro-crypto or at least aware of crypto. Josh Shapiro is the leader right now. Uh, Buttigieg, and again, we're not you know, in the position of saying that these guys are going to be the ones that are selected. What we're trying to just do is do the research, find out how this might play out. Interesting right now, the bet is known uh, right now on Pete Buttigieg with only 6% holding the potential. Uh, Shapiro coming in at 28%. Kamala Harris won't speak to Elizabeth Warren. That's kind of a good thing, I think, if you are pro-crypto. Warren has called Harris twice to apologize for her comments. Mainly it was uh, comments around the whole issue of her being uh, capable of doing the job of the vice presidency. And this was early on. She, of course, has been refused. All right, so when you uh, follow down Shapiro's track record, uh, he's in a swing state, Pennsylvania, stronghold digital mining, uh, polluting the environment with Shapiro administration support. In fact, that's not necessarily the case. Stronghold received over 29 million in tax credits from the state over the last two years. This was in a lawsuit that was out there. So you look at that, and then you look at some of the things that have actually been happening. And this, of course, is Stronghold's position right here. We operate the best available technology, and they've done it pretty much you know, carbon neutral. So this was a good move on Shapiro's part uh, in, in the sense if you are supporting, you know, Bitcoin miners. And of course, this is Stronghold uh, right here. Stronghold uh, has right now their business update on 61 Bitcoins mined. And you can kind of see pretty much a, a green position overall. Stronghold not necessarily doing that great right now from a stock percentage. Uh, or position right here. And of course, I think this is, you know, Bitcoin mining in general, if they're not diversified, these are the kind of things that do happen. Moving on here, and this of course is uh, Warren and Buttigieg are split on big tech. And I think this is one of the big situations. Remember, this was October of 2019 when Warren and Buttigieg were running for uh, the uh, candidacy of uh, presidency. And remember, they are also running as Kamala Harris as well. So the point was at that time is that Warren and Buttigieg were in polar opposites around big tech. Now, there's been a couple of reasons of why, and I'll zoom in on this because the stances make sense in Buttigieg's uh, Silicon Valley supporters. You'll notice a handful of names in here. Remember David Marcus, this is LightSpark, which is a huge uh, lightning uh, platform now. He was the head of Facebook Libra Initiative, but even one of the volunteers worked at MakerDAO. So this is intriguing to me because at least Buttigieg, I think, understands what's going on here. I want to go to a clip real quick.
that gets into a little bit more detail because this was in reference to Mark Zuckerberg talking about Pete Buttigieg. Listen in. Riding shotgun, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg rolling with Mayor Pete Buttigieg. We're getting some good comments, by the way. Yeah. And it was all live streamed to millions. Happy. You have a pretty amazing story. Sure. I don't know about amazing, but uh, no, you have an uh, amazing story. So uh, I took him through downtown so we could see what we we're up to with our smart streets. Uh, I wanted him to see. Uh, uh, what was going on with technology. It was a ride along with two friends who went to college at Harvard at the same time. The chat got personal. <laughs> All right, so that's Zuck, you know, playing, doing Zuck things. Zuck himself and his wife privately recommended staff. Again, this is back in 2019, so just take it for a grain of salt. I don't know how this positions forward, but if you look at some of the things that Buttigieg has been in charge of here recently, uh, heading the Department of Transportation. Buttigieg currently, on the, as a cabinet member, heading up the Department of Transportation. This was a outline for operational concepts for distributed ledger. Uh, go down to page 21, and you'll see that they actually start laying out an overview of how blockchain could be used in, in a variety of different ways. Blockchain-based application providing uh, multi-leg trip options, uh, you look at immutable ledger stores for transactions. Further into this, they go into uh, all sorts of scenarios around decentralized energy marketplace, even all the way into electric vehicles, and also tying that into um, an immutable ledger stores for transactions. So they understand the concept behind it. I think there is some very good, and this is most recent material. And then if you look at what is mentioned a lot within this report, Right here, it was used in type of distributed ledger. They're talking about Ethereum. It was mentioned 11 times. Here was number three, talking about also the distributed ledger on a different category of it. Then right here, type of uh, distributed ledger on EV batteries and grid loading, balancing. Keep going. There is, this is where we're talking about the traceability of battery origin. All of this was Ethereum. And you can kind of just see all of this uh, tied in too. Now, does that mean that he's all in on understanding what the ETH ecosystem can mean for big government, maybe. I mean, there is, this is a, a lot of pretty consistent work and uh, it definitely positions him at least in an understanding capacity of what's happening in blockchain. So that in itself is a good thing uh, going forward. But I wanna go to another clip here because this is what Pete was talking about, Pete Buttigieg was talking about in reference to supply chain because this was a problem, if you remember back during COVID, Many people thought we were gonna have this massive disruption, supply chain was gonna be needed to really enhance. This is what he had to say, take a look. But we can assemble a picture that I don't think was available before because we have new methods of bringing data together so that we can look at fluidity, we can look at on-time performance. You know, we've seen shipping rates come down considerably since two years ago. We think that's one of the big drivers in the disinflation that we've been seeing. Uh, you know, supply chains have become a household term. It's not just something for infrastructure buffs to talk about. Uh, but it was really as early as uh, February of the president's first year that uh, he had an executive order uh, calling on the administration to take steps around supply chains. And the fact that, uh, you know, those uh, most dire predictions didn't come through, that Christmas wasn't canceled. In fact, that, that uh, throughput at those ports hit an all-time high. Right. But I think also all of the players from the private sector that, uh, that the administration convened and sat down with saying, okay, what can we do to get through this uh, historic disruption? Right. This just shows a little bit of data and research of how they're thinking. And this is the most important thing because this will give us an indication. So when we all go to vote out there, we're making the best informed decision we can. Other things to, to look at, this was the transportation department to examine consumer privacy issues with big airlines. And he was trying to ensure that airlines are, are being good stewards of, uh, again, sensitive passenger data, which would apply back to the blockchain for security. And with the most recent situation with CrowdStrike, those are some of the problems that I think a lot of people are still looking at as being revealed now where we have this massive outage due to centralization. And this, of course, gets solved with blockchain. Further into this, this was Adam Cochran kind of uh, summarizing a little bit of what we're talking about. By the way, Harris has no public stance on crypto yet, but Buttigieg, potential running mate, says it could be a commodity, not a security. That's a positive. Shapiro, potential running mate, mandates crypto as money in Pennsylvania. Uh, at the State Department of Banking. Remember, he was the one involved in Stronghold. 
um, the Bitcoin miner. Montoya, one of her former advisors on advanced team, is pro crypto. And then Harris and Warren do not like each other, just to say the case. So you've got one that potentially is ETH. I don't call that Buttigieg. Then you've got Shapiro, which is potentially pro Bitcoin. So the battle begins. We'll see if this uh, plays out in uh, yeah in the coming weeks, because we're obviously going to see this going into the DNC. All right, one thing that is is interesting right here on Polymarket, I'm going to zoom in on Josh Shapiro. About 600 grand on the bet right now for Josh Shapiro. All it would take is for a well-placed series of bets to move Buttigieg up the ante and roll into maybe the potential candidate. And I don't know that that influences anyone, but it's interesting of marketing and how it can be done and how it could be, in a way, this is a different kind of poll because it gets manipulated. Remember the original polls that you typically see, and there's not any poll data out right now on this candidate, meaning Kamala Harris and the potential vice president, because it's just too early. There's not enough poll data out there. All of that poll is driven by mostly media spend. So essentially, poly market is almost the same way. It's driven by bet spend. So interesting things playing out over on poly market. And just as a reminder, this of course changes the game a little bit in the election forecast. Kamala now at 31%, but a Trump holding us commanding lead at 64%. Uh, a few more blue states and swing states, which are really critical. And of course, there shows the rest of the Democratic nominee potentials, all of which have started to move down on the list. Uh, everybody kind of plummeting right here, as you can kind of see Kamala Harris coming in. I want to go to a couple, a couple other things. This right here was Chank Uger coming over from TYT. Um, other is a bargain. The rest of the options on that board aren't very appealing or aren't going to do it. I don't think uh, it's an 84% chance, latest number, uh, that it's Kamala. Uh, there are so many other great candidates. So I think they're still on the balance of whether or not they think Kamala is the position here. So maybe we get something that is out of the blue. Uh, I'd love to get you guys' feedback. Drop some comments down below. I have one more clip that show, shows a little bit more around what Cenk Uger is thinking around this. Now remember, TYT, a left-leaning, you know, much more liberal, and this is his opinion on how this plays out on Polymarket. Take a look. And now I want to go to Polymarket. They're, what, uh, they're a prediction market. This is, this is definitely wrong, in my opinion, okay? And this is a prediction market, so people are putting their money where their mouth is. Kamala Harris is at only 31%. For the Democrat to only be at 31%, no, it's not 31%. It's definitely higher. Other Democratic politician at 2% is a steal. That's the play I do, but hey, that's just me, okay? Kamala Harris, according to the prediction markets, is at 83%. So they think it's almost definitely going to be her. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I would, again, take other here. Others at 8%. Hillary Clinton, Gavin Newsom, RFK Jr. It's none of these people. Elizabeth Warren, Dean Phillips, Joe Biden, no, none of those people. So I would go other. That's a bargain at eight. Buttigieg, who's all over TV, don't count out Buttigieg. I wish we could count out Buttigieg. We can't. I think he'd be a terrible pick, but he's sitting at 7%. Ah, God, that poly market, market is so interesting to me. And the markets are the best we have now because we don't even have polling on it yet because it just happened today. I don't know. I have a feeling with Chank is going to be in a position that right now, it looks like the Democrats are in a uh, quandary because I think the position has been so negative toward, remember, poly market, very crypto leaning, okay? Obviously, it's a crypto prediction market. This just seems so negative when you look at what uh, the Democratic uh, position has been, especially the White House, against crypto. And it's already been shown many times with the regulatory front as well. So I still think this is pretty indicative of what America thinks. So much more surprises coming as we lead into November. We'll cover all of this because it has a huge impact on crypto. Don't forget, go to Stand With Crypto, check it out, uh, find out who your person is on these key races and start to support those candidates. So check it out over at uh, standwithcrypto.org. If you guys are not in the Diamond Circle, get in right now. It's a great place to get additional content. Of course, follow me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.